Hello everybody! Welcome to my YouTube channel, the best channel for English learners who want to ace their IELTS exam. This video is all about part 1 of the IELTS speaking exam. First, let me give you some general information about this part of the speaking exam. Part 1 usually lasts for about 4 and 5 minutes. And this part serves as an introduction to the speaking exam. In this part, you're asked to introduce yourself to the examiner and you're given questions on usually two topics. Topics are different. You might be asked questions about your hometown, about your studies, and if you worry about your job, and about your hobbies, interests, so on and so forth. Part 1 usually serves as a warm-up. It helps you to break the ice between you and the examiner and it helps you to be better prepared for the other parts of the speaking exam. Even though this is only part 1, an introduction to the speaking exam, it is still a very important part because usually experienced and professional examiners, they will find out your approximate level of English in only part one of the speaking exam. Now, let me give you some tips and techniques to use in this part of the speaking exam. Tip number one, don't give a very long answer when examiner just wants to know your name. At the beginning of your speaking exam, the examiner asks your name just to confirm your identification. But a common mistake usually made by students is that instead of just telling their name as they tend to give a very long answer to examiner's questions. For example, when the examiner asks them, what is your name? Instead of saying, my name is Gulora and my surname is Muzaffarva, they usually say, my name is Gulora. I'm a university student majoring in this subject. I come from this part of my country. It is a beautiful area. My hobbies are, my interests are, and etc. This sounds very strange. Because in real life also, when somebody asks your name, you wouldn't give a lot of information about yourself. This is really weird. The same is true in your speaking exam also. When the examiner just wants to know your name, no need to give a lot of information about yourself. Just tell your name and that's it. Tip number two. Don't start answering the questions without fully understanding their meaning. Students are usually anxious and they feel nervous during speaking exam, that's why they usually don't pay attention to the examiner's questions. For example, in my previous lessons, I asked one of my students the following question. I asked her, what part of a day do you usually listen to music? But she was really nervous and she was in a hurry to answer the questions, that's why she didn't listen to my question carefully and she started talking about her favorite types of music. But this was wrong because I didn't ask about her favorite types of music. My question was about what part of a day do you usually listen to music? That's why I stopped her and I repeated my question. But again, she didn't listen carefully and then she started talking about what days of a week she usually listens to music. Again, this answer is off topic. That's why it's really important to listen to examiner's questions carefully and then start answering. Tip number three. Don't give a very short answer in this part of the speaking exam. Don't say yes, no or I don't know. In this part of the speaking exam, you're expected to extend your answers by giving as many details as possible and by giving reasons for your opinions. This leads to my next tip, tip number four. While you have to extend your answers in part one of the speaking exam, you need to keep a balance between giving a very long answer and a short answer. What I mean by this is that you shouldn't give a very long answer in this part of the speaking exam. Because this part is all an introduction and it helps you to warm up and to be better prepared for the, the next, the bigger parts of the speaking exam. And this part only lasts for about 4 and 5 minutes. That's why it's not necessary to give very long answers, for example, to give seven or eight sentences to answer one question. In my opinion, giving four or five sentences at maximum will suffice in this part of the speaking exam. Tip number five. Don't repeat the same words as in the question. In your speaking exam, you're expected to paraphrase the words in a question and then to use as many different words as possible in your answers. 
Remember, in the IELTS exam, variety is of great importance. In both writing and speaking parts of the exam, you are required to use a wide range of grammar structures, a wide range of phrases, expressions, collocations, idioms, and others. That's why you need to work on your English vocabulary. You need to learn different synonyms, different idioms and collocations to enrich vocabulary in your answers. Tip number six, don't speak to yourself in this part of the speaking exam. It happens very often among IELTS candidates that because they feel anxious and nervous during their speaking exam, they avoid eye contact with the examiner. They tend to look at the ceiling, look at the floor, look at the other parts of the room, but they don't keep eye contact with the examiner. As a result, the examiner feels that you are not directly communicating your ideas with the examiner and you are making a monotonous speech, just you are talking to yourself. This is not communication. A true communication is looking into the eyes of the listener and explaining your ideas, not only why words or why different grammar structures, but also by using your body language. Remember, communication is not only about words, phrases or grammar structures, it's about body language as well. And in real life, most of the information in our speech is communicated via our body language. That's why feel free to use your hands, to use your eyes, your head, to explain your answers to the examiner. Tip number seven, you need to feel confident and relaxed in your speaking exam. Confidence is a key element of speaking performance and if you're not feeling confident and if you're feeling under pressure during your speaking exam, you will automatically underperform. As a result, you will not get the result which you have dreamed about. That's why it's important to learn to meditate and to feel confident during your speaking exam. Now, you might be asking a question. How do I learn to feel confident in my speaking exam? This leads to my next point. Tip number eight. The answer is practice. As a famous English saying goes, practice makes perfect. You need to practice as many different speaking questions as possible before your speaking exam. You can practice speaking questions with your English teacher or you can practice speaking skills with your friends as well. Whenever you practice with your friends, you can use the role play of an examiner and a candidate. What I mean by this is that you play the roles of an examiner and a candidate with one of your friends. First, one person plays the role of an examiner and this person asks questions from the person who is playing the role of a candidate. After you have finished speaking questions, you will exchange your roles. This time, the second person asks questions as an examiner and the first person will answer them as a candidate. In this way, you can practice speaking questions before your speaking exam. Or if you don't have any friends or acquaintances to practice your speaking, you can practice at home also by speaking to yourself in the mirror or by recording your voice, recording your answers to different speaking questions. After you have recorded your answers, you need to play back and listen and analyze mistakes in your speech. When you have practiced sufficiently before your speaking exam, you feel confident and you will perform much better in your speaking exam. Finally, we've come to the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked the video, please support me by subscribing to my channel and also hit the like button and the notification bell. Also, share the video with people who are studying for the IELTS exam because this might come in handy in their exam preparation. Once again, thank you very much for watching the video and see you in my future videos.